right, guys, I'm back. And this is basically, as you can see what the title says, um, how Uganda was seduced by conservative evangelicals for the, from the U.S. specifically. Um, hold on. I believe that... Uh, even though this is from 2014, this is obviously a very old situation, but this, uh, I believe this characterizes where we're at with current U Ugandan politics, um, as that United Nations report was talking about. Um, I should probably do more research on what the president said, but all right, let's get, this is basically background lore of the possibility of where we're at now and where the president stands or the Ugandan president stands on LGBT issues. So, how Uganda was con uh, yeah, okay. Last month, the Ugandan president uh Yaweri Museveni Museveni finally signed his country's con controversial anti-gay bill into law, outlawing homosexuality and threatening offenders with up to 14 years in prison. Mr. Museveni claimed the measure was provoked by arrogant and careless Western groups that are fond of coming into our schools and recruiting young children into homosexuality, end quote. Critics of legislation says it is not homosexuality that has been imported from the West, but homophobia. Roger Ross Williams, the director of God Loves Uganda, a documentary about the influence of conservative U.S. Christians in East African nations, said, quote, The anti-homosexuality bill would never have come about without the involvement of American fundamentalist evangelicals, end quote. Uh, one of the first to investigate links between American conservatives and the African anti-gay movement was Kipia uh, coma, a Zambian clergyman living in Boston, uh, homosexuality was illegal in Uganda under existing colonial laws, he explained, quote, but nobody was ever arrested or prosecuted based on those old laws. People turned a blind eye to it. Homosexuality was not a political issue, end quote. I'm sure there was people who held stigma, but of course, colonialism and, uh, developed quote-unquote countries that can attack certain countries in Africa that are more backwoods and I guess outdated like we still cling to this bullshit of outdated nonsense so it just makes sense that we would ruin people's lives with our nonsense all right that changed in, in 2009 Rev Coma said when a group of American evangelicals led by Pastor Scott Lively, a self-proclaimed expert on the, quote, gay movement, end quote, held a series of talks in Uganda. Mr. L Lively warned audiences that the evil institution of homosexuality sought to, quote, prey upon, end quote, and recruit regrand, uh, Ugandan children in a bid to defeat the marriage-based uh, society. Dr. Frank Mugisha, uh... What is this ad? So annoying. Get out of here. Okay, this is gonna like accidentally have me click on something, isn't it? Dr. Frank Mugisha, director of LGBT rights uh, organization, Sexual Minorities, Uganda Smug, recently told The Independent on uh, Sunday, the idea of gay Uganda Quote, the idea of gay Uganda, recruiting people to homosexuality, that language wasn't in Uganda pre-2009, lively made my work very difficult and was com uh, conspiring with my legislators, but to Ugandans, he was like God himself. The people were worshipping him as if he was from heaven, end quote. American conservatives first arrived in Uganda in significant numbers following the fall in 1979 of Idi Amin, the Muslim direct dictator who had banned evangelical Christianity. Okay. Well, that's different. Well, maybe not. It's just not something you hear every day. A dictator who bans Christianity. Sure. I mean, no, but 
sure, of course that exists. Among them was Mike Bickle, founder of the uh, Kansas City International House of Prayer. I really wish this ad would go away. Thank you. Sorry about that. If anyone's still watching, that would be epic. Alright. Sorry about that. Um, where was I? Kansas City-based International House of Prayer, IHOP, according to... <laughs> IHOP. Oh, what? According... Wh why does everything need to be abbreviated? I'm so sorry, but why? According to Mr. Williams, Bickle was there on the ground on the day Amin fell with a group of American Christian leaders to take the country as a Christian nation. U.S. Christian groups have since spent millions on schools, hospitals, and orphanages in Uganda. They have also found fertile ground for their religious values. Rev. Koma said American conservatives may have lost the culture wars on the home front, but they believe they can win in the developing world. Quote, the battle has been fought on American soil and then exported to the African continent, end quote, he said. Mr. Williams' film documents the involvement in Uganda of U.S. pastors such as Lou Engel, a serial leader in IHOP, which has more than 1,000 uh, staffers and a reported 30 million, uh, 80 million uh, pounds annual budget. Many of its young missionaries are at work in Uganda today. IHOP anti-gay uh, agenda is explicit uh, at home and abroad. In 2008, Mr. Engel led a prayer rally in 33,000. Uh, oh, a prayer rally of 30,000 people in San Diego to prayer to pr uh, to pray for the passage of Proposition 8, California's ban on same-sex marriage. I am regretting not pulling up a current day situation of this, aside from that uh, United Nations report, which is still relevant, but maybe I should have read this first, you know? Anyways, before his influential trip to East Africa, Mr. Lively uh, was best known for his 1995 book, The Pink Swastika, Homosexuality in the Nazi Party, which asserted that Hitler and other leading Nazis were gay and that their homosexuality inspired German militarism in the Holocaust. In March 2009, he spent five hours addressing the Ugandan parliament. So we know this isn't true, because it seems like there's a lot of outspoken Nazis against homosexuality, and like even if you wanted to argue that there were some homosexuals in the ranks, uh, specifically, I think, those in the Weimar Republic who had anti feminist sentiments join some of the Nazis, I think. Uh, I think that's what I read. But yeah, this is this is pretty insane. Kev Rome, uh, Coma, who surreptitiously filmed one of my lively seminars, said, quote, he brought to Uganda this new narrative of so-called international gay agenda. You might think, quote, he is out of his mind, but people believed him and the narrative since 2009 he had he had been about uh, protecting children from homosexuals end quote that narrative proved compelling many Africans retain a lingering suspicion of post-colonial West while appeals to parental instincts are powerful in Uganda the world's most useful nation 50 percent of its population is 15 years older or younger for his part, Mr. Lively told The Independent that the widely circulate that the video of his seminar, quote, was selectively edited by a gay activist. It's pure propaganda and not representative of my views, end quote. Shortly after Mr. Lively's visit, Uganda uh, M Prime MP David Bahati introduced the first draft of Uganda anti-homosexuality bill, which included the death penalty for serial offenders. Mr. Bahati is a member of the family, a secretive evangelical group based in Washington, D.C., apparently not, 
whose ranks include current and former U.S. lawmakers, and which also has a close relationship with President Museveni. What the hell? Well, this makes sense, honestly. Mr. Lively said that when he made a uh, made recommendations to water down Mr. Bahati's draft, they were ignored. Quote, I'm very glad they dropped the death penalty, which was beyond the pale, end quote, he said, and goes on to say, I have mixed feelings about the remaining provisions. Simple homosexuality should not be punished with jail terms, end quote. In 2012, the U.S. Center for Constitutional Rights sued Mr. Lively on behalf of Dr. Mugisha and Smug, alleging that his involvement in the passage of Uganda's anti-gay legislation restricted the human rights of gay people. The case has yet to come to court, Mr. Lively said, quote, I was invited to Uganda by Ugandans who were concerned by the transformations that were beginning to take place in their society. It's a very racist premise to suggest that a white evangelical pastor, just by the force of his rhetoric, could overpower the will and intelligence of an entire African country. It's called propaganda, and you can frame a small amount of people as a large amount, like just like what we do, like, like Trump obviously tries to frame it like he's at a rally of like tons of people like so it has nothing to do with race in my opinion okay yet following their success in uganda mr williams said american fundamental fundamentalist evangelicals quote are targeting the entire develop developing world country after country is passing these laws end quote in January, Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan signed his country's anti-gay bill into law. Mr. Lively remains adamant that he had no influence on the wording of the Ugandan law, but he is content to take credit for similar developments elsewhere. In 2006, he called on Russia to criminalize the public advocacy of homosexuality, end quote. President Putin's government introduced just such a law last year. Mr. Lively said, quote, the Russian law that criminalizes propaganda to children was, I believe, directly modeled on my suggestion. Um, case study. I want to leave Uganda because I fear for my life. Harold, 28. There is no one who says, I want to become gay, end quote, especially here in Uganda. If you're born with one hand missing, I cannot force you to have a second because I want you to do boxing we do not choose to be gay what <laughs> okay that's obviously mixing just like mutilation and victim blaming i don't know what's going on there i've never told my parents i'm gay i'm um only my older brother every time i think of sharing it with my mom i think he'll she'll get worried when i try to do is have friends what I try to do is have friends that are girls. That makes my mom keep thinking that one of them might be a girlfriend. Here, if you are gay, people look at you as if you are a beast. You are abnormal. When I'm on a public transport now, I get paranoid when people look at me. We feel worried all the time. That's why I rarely go out on the streets. I had, profession I had a professional job last year for six months, but left it, although they didn't know that I'm gay. I never felt safe. Up until this week, I was mainly staying at home and only going out when I needed to buy something, but I had to start sup a supermarket job because I had to pay my rent. If you are renting a house and the landlords find out you're gay, they will say, quote, go away, you're going to spoil my children, end quote. There are also people who hunt gays. They have a belief that gay people have money uh what okay once they find out you're gay they use their personal influence to make you suffer until they get something from you i don't feel safe at all because of what happened to my friend albert he was threatened a few weeks ago i'm sure they the men who threatened him know who i am because they even came to my mother's place looking for me oof 
I want to leave Uganda because I fear for my life and have no uh, peace. The president wants to be reelected and he's ruled Uganda for so long that there are some groups who want him to leave. He was squeezed into a corner. If he refuses to sign the anti-gay bill, citizens would not vote for him. Ah, so this is where we're at, right? I don't think things will ever change for gay people in Uganda because uh, there was hatred for gay people even before the bill. People are so attached to the culture and it's all about preserving the culture. They know being gay is, quote, bad, end quote, and it's harder to forget bad news that's good news. Oh, then good news. Yeah, that's true, I guess. All right, and you don't really, I mean, being LGBT is such a neutral lifestyle, like, you don't hear anything good necessarily from it. So, of course, when you hear something sketchy, of course, that's the loudest thing you're going to hear about just people trying to exist that aren't necessarily attached to this atrocity. So, this is just so ridiculous. All right, on to the next article. So, I'm not reading this all in order, because I still have to figure some things out, actually. But, we're doing research on Scott Lively now, and his book, The Pink Swastika. Because this is some twisted shit that I've never heard about, until like a couple months when I was pulling this stuff. Alright, Scott Lively. Scott Douglas Lively. Born December 14th, 1957, is an American activist, author, and attorney who is the president of Abiding Truth Ministries, an anti-LGBT group based on Temecula, California. He was also a co-founder of Latvia-based group Watchmen on the Walls, state director of the California branch of the American Family Association, and a spokesman for the Oregon Citizen Alliance. He unsuccessfully attempted to be elected as the governor of Massachusetts in both 2014 and 2018. Lively has promoted a hardline anti-gay interpretation of the Bible, been involved in the ex-gay movement, and been staunchly opposed to LGBT rights. In 1995, he co-authored the Pink Swastika, a book claiming gay people were prominent in the Nazi party and were behind Nazi atrocities. He has called for the criminalization of, quote, the public advocacy of homosexuality, quote, end quote, as far back as 2007. Widely credited as an engineer of Uganda's Anti-Homosexuality Act 2014, he, came, he gave a series of talks to Ugandan lawmakers before the drafting of the anti-homosexuality bill. This dude's a psychopath. Get out of Massachusetts, dude. Damn. Lively was born and raised in the town of Shelburne Falls, Massachusetts, the oldest of six children. He became an alcoholic at the age of 12? An addiction he explains as a means to cope with an unhappy family situation. When Lively was 16, his father was committed to a mental institution, never to reti- uh, return. After graduating from high school in 1976, Lively spent the next 10 years, quote, drifting around the United States of 10 homeless, sometimes sleeping under bridges and begging for spare change on street corners, end quote. Damn. So this dude had a horrible life, and I wonder if he's taking it out on gay people or something. Like, is this, is this that? Come on. Lively has stated, quote, in his autobiography, I visited every one of the 48 continental states and logged over 25,000 miles by thumb, bus, and train in my wandering. I didn't learn to drive until I was 25. Lively states that he became a born-again Christian on February 1st, 1986, while staying at an alcohol treatment facility in Portland, Oregon, of which he has said, quote, it was a miracle which completely removed my desire for alcohol and drugs, something I had been able to do for myself over several years of a desperate, uh, futile struggle to find some way to freedom. Political candid- uh, candidacies. 
Lively was an independent candidate for governor of Massachusetts in the 2014 election. He ran again as a Republican candidate in 2018 election at the Massachusetts Republican Party State Convention on April 28, 2018. He received support from nearly a third of the delegates president, present, exceeding the minimum requirement to appear on the ballot for the primary election on September 4th, challenging fellow GOP incumbent Charlie Baker. Uh, Li Lively lost the primary to Baker, with Lively receiving 36.1% uh, support. 98,214 uh, out of 240,199,000 votes cast. Sorry, I read that wrong. Wow. And Baker remaining 63.9%. Activities. Anti-abortion activism. In 1988, Lively became... Uh, campaigning against abortion in Portland. In 1989, he became a spokesperson for the Oregon Citizens Alliance and worked on the anti-abortion ballot measure for the 1990 United States midterm elections. Anti-homosexuality activism in the United States. In 1991, Lively, together with Oregon C Citizens Allegiance, shifted focus from abortion to homosexuality, citing, quote, rapid advance of that uh, a agenda in Oregon, end quote. In 1991, Lively assaulted Catherine Staffer, throwing her against the wall and dragging her across the floor of a Portland church whoa, at an Oregon Citizens uh, Allegiance event she had been trying to film. In 1992, he was found liable for damages excess of 31000 This dude's seriously a psychopath. Lively is the president of Abiding the Truth Ministries, a conservative Christian organization based on Temecula, California, which is listed by the Southern Poverty Law Center as an anti-gay hate group. All right. In 2000... Oh, no. This is what I mostly care about. Anti-homosexuality activism in Uganda. In March... Uh... I don't know, guys. I'll read this for you, I guess. In 2006, Lively met with Latvian pastor Alexei Ledyev to form an international anti-gay organization called Watchmen on the Walls, which the Southern Poverty Law Center has dubbed a hate group. Lively spent the summer of 2006 uh, puncturing, uh, lecturing, sorry, I haven't eaten today, uh, at Latvian universities and meeting with lawmakers and preached at Ledviev's New Generation Church. During lively speaking engagements, he claimed that Western activities backed by the European Union were trying to infiltrate Latvian society and spread homosexuality, particularly to children. After his trip to Latvia, lively then embarked on 50 city tour of Russia and other forms of Soviet republics, sponsored by Ledyev's church, which had roughly 200 congre uh, congregations and a regional TV channel. As Lively traveled from the Baltics to Serbia, to Siberia, he pressed officials to outlaw the public advocacy of homosexuality and urged officials from passing anti-discrimination laws. Aid of the nine countries he visited eventually weighed the nationwide bans on, quote, homosexual propaganda. And five, including Russia, either have bills pending or have since passed them into law. Lively takes partial credit for this development and calls Russia's gay propaganda ban his, quote, proudest accomplishment. In 2007, Lively wrote, a letter to the Russian people in which he advocated criminalization, criminalizing, quote, the public advocacy of homosexuality, end quote. On August 3rd, 2013, he respond, in response to anti-LGBT legislation in Russia, Lively wrote an open letter addressed to Vladimir Putin saying, quote, you have set an example of moral leadership that has shamed the governments of Western Europe and North America and inspired the people of the world, end quote. That must be a fucked up thing to hear from America.
Lively appeared on Russian television channel Russia One's documentary titled Sodom in September 2014. All right, anti homosexuality in Uganda. In March 2009, Lively, along with evangelicals, activist Don Shimir, and celeb Lee Brunadige arrived in Kampala to give a series series of talks quote the theme of the event according to Stephen Langa its Ugandan organizer was the gay agenda that whole hidden and dark agenda and the threat homosexuals pose to Bible-based values and the traditional American family or at traditional African family end quote lively gave a lengthy presentation to members of Ugandan parliament and cabinet in which in which he laid out the, gu- the argument that the nation's president and lawmakers would later use to justify Uganda's anti-gray cr- crackdown. Namely, the Western agitators were trying to unravel Uganda's social fabric by spreading, quote, the disease, end quote, of homosexuality to children. Quote, thousands of Ugandans, including police officers, teachers, and national politicians, end quote, reportedly attended the conference. Uh, Lively and his colleagues, quote, discussed how to make gay people straight, how gay men of 10 sodomized teenage boys, and how the gay movement is an evil institution whose goal is to defeat marriage-based society and replace it with a culture of sexual promiscuity, end quote. He asserted that 1994 Rwandan genocide probably involved gay men whom he referred to as monsters. Wow. Damn, blaming all genocide on gay people, huh? Did not see this coming, honestly. Lively wrote days later that someone had likened their campaign to a nuclear bomb against the gay agenda in Uganda, end quote. The talks inspired the development of Ugandan Anti-Homosexuality Act, a private member's bill proposed in the Ugandan parliament. The bill, submitted in November 2009, called for the death penalty in some cases and was harshly criticized in the international community. Lively expressed disappointment that, quote, the legislation was so harsh, end quote. Lively says he recommended an approach rooted in rehabilitation, not punishment, and says anti-gay bill uh, being considered by Ugandan parliament goes too far, end quote. Even though he himself is not opposed to criminalizing homosexuality so this is him trying to pass the buck and then say oh i didn't mean for that they're the bad ones so now we should focus on uganda and they're the bad guys who are doing more harm than what we want to do to gay people my guess this is just like some anti-african and anti-gay plot in some way this is weird quote my advice to the parliament parliament was to go the other direction from what they did to actually go on the proactive positive message promoting the family promoting marriage etc through the schools and that if they were going to continue to criminalize homosexuality uh, that they should focus on rehabilitation and not punishment I was very disappointed when the law came out as it is written now with such incredibly harsh punishments end quote lively has stated that he will endorse the bill if the death penalty is removed what in march 2010 lively wrote quote in my view homosexuality indeed all sex outside of marriage should be actively discouraged by society but only as aggressively as necessary to prevent the mainstreaming of alternative sexual lifestyles and with concern for the prevention of the liberties of those who desire to keep their personal lifestyles private marriage-based cultures served humanity very favorably during the centuries when homosexuality was disapproved but tolerated as a subculture in america england and elsewhere it has obviously not fared well in the decades since the so-called sexual revolution kicked open Pandora's box and unleashed both rampant uh, heterosexual promiscuity and gay pride on the world. Um, 
This is a weird explanation. So, okay. Promiscuity uh, from heterosexuals is gay people's issues, I assume? Okay. In March of this year, I had the privilege of addressing numbers of the Ugandan Parliament in their National Assembly Hall when the anti-homosexuality law was just being considered. I urged them to pattern the bill, their bill on some American laws regarding alcoholism and drug use. Drug abuse. I cited my own pre-Christian experience being arrested for drunk driving. I was given and chose the option of therapy, which turned out to be one of the best decisions of my life. I also cited the policy in some U.S. jurisdictions regarding marijuana criminalization of drug prevents its users from promoting it and discourages non-users from starting, even while the law itself is very lightly enforced, if at all, end quote. Okay. It's a little weird that Scott wrote this book about how the Nazis are basically gay, but he didn't expect it to go this far. I'm going to assume he's just saving face and passing on the book and the the discrimination target to Uganda. And, you know, that's all I'm thinking of. I don't see how <laughs> this is him trying to come off as like a better person. Lawsuit by Sexual Minority Uganda versus Scott Lively. On March 14, 2012, the Center of Constitutional Rights filed federal lawsuits against Lively on behalf of gay rights groups. Sexual Minority Uganda, under the Alien Tort Statute, the lawsuit accused Lively of violating international law by conspiring to prosecute the Ugandan LGBT community. This first of its kind lawsuit alleged that Lively actions over the previous decade in the celebration with some Ugandan government officials and Ugandan religious leaders or responsible for depriving LGBT Ugandans and their fundamental human rights based on solely on their identity. The lawsuit alleges that this fell under the definition of prosecution under international law and was a crime against humanity. Lively was... Sorry. Lively was to answer the allegations of the crime against humanity of uh, persecution he was portrayed uh he has portrayed the ugandan lgbt movement as pedophilic and genocidal and linked it to quote to the nazis and rwandan murders regarding the allegations of violating international law he said quote that's about as ridiculous as it gets i've never done anything in uganda except preach the gospel and speak my opinion about the homosexuality issue end quote Pam Spees, a staff attorney for the Center for Constitutional Rights, said, quote, This is not just based on his speech. It's based on his conduct. Belief is one thing, but actively trying to harm and deprive other people of their rights is the definition of per, uh, persecution, end quote. On August 14, 2013, the American federal judge ruled that the case against Scott Lively by the Center for Constitutional Rights on behalf of Sexual Minorities Uganda, a Ugandan-based coalition of LGBT rights and advocacy groups could f move forward. U.S. District Court Judge Michael Ponzor rejected the uh, defendant's jurisdictional claims to dismiss the case, ruling that the plaintiffs were solid grounds under international and federal law and that First Amendment arguments were premature. Okay. In December 2014, First Circuit Court Appeals rejected another petition to dismiss the case. In the summer of 2016, the case continued, and a summer of judgment hearing before Judge Ponsor was scheduled for September two, uh, 2016 on the 14th in Springfield, Massachusetts. In June 2017, Sponsor dismissed the case due to lack of jurisdiction, citing 2013. 13 U.S. Supreme Court decision in Kyle Bell v. Royal Dutch Petroleum uh, Co. All right, so this is where I'm trying to get at. So obviously, it seems like Scott Lively is anti-poverty. This dude is all around trash, obviously, according to the January 2000. Uh, uh, 
Levin profile, Lively quote, has not changed his view that gays are agents of Americans' moral decline, but he has refocused his approach to fit his uh, parishioners in Springfield, Massachusetts, and quote, is toning down his anti-gay truths and shifting his focus to helping the downtrodden. Oh, okay. <laughs> Believes the downtrodden are the the work of gay people, though. So, you look good doing this, <laughs> apparently. Okay. Kevin E. Abrams and Lively co-authored The Pink Swastika, 1995. Abrams and Lively state in the preface that, quote, homosexuals are the true inventors of Nazism uh, and the guiding force behind many Nazi atrocities quote, or end quote. The premise of Lively in Abrams' book has been criticized as a pernicious myth, utterly false, and a flat-out lie, and several historians have questioned Abrams and Lively, Lively's claims and selective use of research. All right, so I'm just gonna look at this real quick. Might have to read it a little bit. Um, I guess it, if there's not much to it, there's not much to it, but all right. Oh, okay. The Pink Swastika. Homosexuality in the Nazi Party. Now, this is the part of the video where it's obviously complete propaganda. So, I don't want anyone to, you know, think I'm reading this in good faith. All right. In 1995, pseudo-historical book by Scott Lively and Kevin Abrams, drawing on... Samuel Egra's 1945 book, Germany's National Vice, Lively and Abrams argue that the crimes committed by homosexualities in the Nazi party exceed the prosecution of homosexual homosexuals in Nazi Germany and that homosexuality contributed to the extreme militarism of Nazi Germany. They contend that only feminine homosexuals were persecuted by the Nazis while butch homosexuals formed the leadership cadre of, of the Nazi party. Historian Andrew... Waker Fuss uh, criticized the book for lack of accuracy and, quote, outright homophobic charges, end quote. The claim advanced by Igra, Lively, and Abrams um, <coughs> that homosexuality is responsible for Nazi atrocities is rejected by most historians. Damn, the fact that historians are even having to, like, talk about this it's like the military having to like show people how to naruto run or something like this is kind of ridiculous of course this is the type of thing that would just cause a genocide so of course historians have to tackle this and other parts of the consulates have to tackle this yes all right uh the authors of the book are kevin abrams da, 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 da. yeah uh it's got uh aragon uh, Okay, loosely affiliated with the Christian Coalition of America, adding to the ministers. Yeah. Okay, Russian gay propaganda, Uganda so-called kill the gays bill. Oh, Jesus Christ! The book was published. Okay, content. Um, we pretty much already knew about the authors, so just skipping past that. Anyways, content. This book was first published in 1995 by Founders Publishing uh, Corporation in, in 2017. The authors released the fifth edition published by Veritas Aterna Press. They state that their motivation for writing the book is to respond to the myth of the pink triangle and the gay political agenda. One significant source for the pink swastika was Samuel Igra's Germany National Vice, 1945. Among other things, Igra claimed that, quote, there is a casual connection between mass sexual perversion and German war crimes during both world wars. Yes, there was fertility cults, which is like the complete opposite of the gay agenda, at least in terms of stereotypes and when we think gay people don't want kids, when, of course, I think they're more likely to adopt. Um... The book attempts to synergize Igra's allegations that German militarism had a homoerotic foundation with the Nazi occult. 
theories popularized by American author Dusty Sklar in her book The Nazi and the Occult, 1977. The claim advanced by Igra, Lively, and Adams that homosexuality is re responsible for Nazi atrocities has been frequently asserted, but is rejected by most historians. In the Pink Swastika, Andrew Abrams and Lively argued that homosexualities were the true inventors of Nazism and the guiding force behind many Nazi atrocities, and that, quote, there was far more brutality, rape, torture, and murder committed against innocent people by Nazi deviants and homosexuals than there ever was against homosexuals, end quote. The authors claimed that only femme homosexuals were persecuted, and even they did not fare as badly as other n Nazi victims, while butch homosexuals, including Adolf Hitler, Joseph Goebbels, Hermann Göring, Heinrich Himmler, and Rudolf Hess, formed the core leadership of the Nazi regime. They claimed that the leaders of the Wandervogel scouting movement, quote, recruiting countless young men into the homosexual lifestyle and the Sturm Batschulung, the Nazi party's original pre-military wing, also engaged in homosexual uh, recruitment. Chapters of the book addressed issues such as Magnum Hirschfeld and his Institute for Homosexual, Adolf Brand and uh, Kreef Corpse, Balder von Schurrasch and Hitler Youth, and the Ernst Rom. Jeez. Um, okay. Reception. In his book, Stormtrooper Families and Homosexuality in Sturmbattenlung, American historian Andrew Waffenfuss described the author as, quote, a pair of anti-gay political activists who, quote, tried to rebrand the brown shirt as a pink swastika, end quote. That's crazy. He situates the book within 1990 culture wars in the United States and noted that Lively's allegations of, quote, gay fascism, end quote, have gained, quote, wide popularity on the American right, end quote, as well as in Russia and Uganda. Walker Fuss considers that there are numerous and persuasive criticisms of Lively and Adams, misuse of historical method, end quote. He criticized the pink swastika's outright homophobic charges and recommended the annotated pink swastika an internal publication of the citizens allied for civic action as a, quote, as useful guide to the errors and inaccuracies. The text is deconstructed page by page to reveal its many flaws, end quote. Many historians, Martin Golinitz, called the book's argument completely untenable, end quote, because it relies on fabrications like a claim that Rom's essay was the product of Weimar homosexual movement. Sociologist Arline Steen states the pink swastika, quote, is a careful construction piece of political rhetoric mixing serious scholarship with lies and outright distortions, truths and half-truths and falsehoods. End quote. According to Stein, the book is part of an effort to strip gays of their victim status in order to decrease support for LGBT rights. Writing in Journal of History of Sexuality, historian Eric Jensen regards the author's linkage of homosexuality and Nazism as the reference of the pernicious myth uh, originating in 1930s attacks on Nazism by sociologists and communists, and which has been long since dispelled by serious scholarships. Oh. So this has been a myth that has reoccurred, I guess? Oh, nice. Um, an article in Boston Magazine written by journalist Spencer Buell contended that the book contained ludicrous theories that had been, quote, thoroughly debunked, according to Fordham University's Internet History source book on the Holocaust, quote, no serious historian takes the Lively slash Abram book seriously as anything other than evidence of the modern American far right, end quote. Lively said that the book, quote, indirectly forced the gays to abandon the pink tri triangle as the primary symbol of the movement, end quote and replace it with the rainbow flag. In fact, the rainbow flag has been in use since 1978. The book has been promoted by some conservative Christian groups and uh, 
conversion therapy advocates. Yeah, I did not see, okay, this is crazy. Conversion therapy is promoting this? Nice, that is just fucking great. For example, a representative of the Family Defense Council claimed that the pink swastika was, quote, a thoroughly researched, imminently readable dem demolition of the gay myth symbolized by the pink triangle that the Nazis were anti-homosexual, quote, right-wing website World Net Daily also promoted the pink swastika, stating that it, quote, makes the case that the Nazi party is best understood as neo-pagan homosexual cult, end quote. The Southern Poverty Law Center asserts that the book's historical uh, negationism pseudo-history, which denies documented facts, is comparable to Holocaust denial. <sighs> Let's all take that in, folks, if you got this far. This is definitely pure distilled denial. And Scott knows this. He's trying to pass this on to Uganda and other people and then be like, oh, that wasn't me. That's just their opinion, you know? Oh, man. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next one.